The Nigerian Air Force has cleared the air over the recent death of Flying Officer Tulu Lokwe Arotile, Nigeria's first female fighter helicopter pilot, who died earlier last week. The Air Force Director of Public Relations and Information, Air Vice Marshal Ibikunle Daramola, in re releasing the details of the Air Force preliminary investigation report in Abuja, says the report confirms Flying Officer Arotile was mistakenly hit by a car belonging to her former classmates at the Air Force Comprehensive School in Kaduna. Air Vice Marshal Daramola says insinuations attributing her death on social media and various online media platforms are false, they are baseless, and also in sensitive. On the 14th of July 2020, the Nigerian Air Force, and indeed the entire nation, was thrown into mourning as a result of the death of one of our shining young stars in the person of Flying Officer Tolokwe Arotile, the NAV's first female combat helicopter pilot. Her unfortunate demise has elicited an overwhelming outpouring of condolences, prayers, and support to the Nigerian Air Force. And still on this matter, we have joining us via Skype a security expert and Air Vice Marshal Femi Gbadebo. Thank you for joining us. Good morning and thank you for having me. We, we are all shocked to hear the sad news of the passing of Tulu Lokwe. First off, what does, I mean, Tulu Lokwe's attainment, though cut short, represent to Nigeria and the aviation sector? Well, it's quite a milestone. Uh, you can see the age of the, see the way the Air Force operated. Uh, even right from training day, um, get a distinguished degree in mathematics and he's defeated the country. You need to check for IAC, you need to check uh, so many other training stations. And from the way he goes up the responsibility, exposed to the end of the present, the uh, present one. So the dignity and putting her own, she said, of course, well, the effort was happy. Uh, of course, we have, you know, well, we've had people in the aviation sector, that is, uh, Nigerian the air, Airways, those states, and the uh, companies that are into helicopter now. But the life in the military is a and uh, we, we, since why it, it took a while to get ladies into the aviation sector. Mm -hmm. And not only did she get this, but, but pushed right to uh, the front line, which is on the future. Mm. Now, I, I, if I, you check with the. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I was going to say, as an Air Vice Marshal, sir, and having experienced the rigors of life as a pilot, as well as, you know, the family life demands, is it progressive of us to even encourage more women to go into this field of service? What's your thought on that? Oh, yes. Um, as shown, and of course, it's also had a few other things to um, the film barriers can be broke. And she held her own. She went for uh, rigorous trainings in Africa. And she came well. Uh, yeah. What you understand is, like I said, those flying in the private sector, they operate from a fixed base. They go to work, they come home virtually every day. Uh, but when you're in the military, you are constantly being moved, depending on the demands of the city. As you could see from the reports, her base was Edugo. Uh, and then they moved to Katipo. This operation, she's been in the north and so on. So you are on demand. It's not easy. You know, 
afraid we might have to end it there. We apologize uh, for the quality of the line there, but thank you so very much, retired Air Vice Marshal Femi Badebo, for your thoughts and for sharing all of it with us this morning here on the news. Thank you for having me.